Now, distributed concurrency control in database systems. Uh, well, think about it this way. We have a shared nothing distributed DBMS. And so each one of these blue boxes is a computer. It's connected to a local disk and a network. So that a line across the bottom is a shared network between these computers. And for today, we'll assume that data is partitioned, as in a shared nothing database, but not replicated. Replication introduces its own issues, which we uh, won't have time to talk about in this class. Now, the transactions come in and they arrive at some node. So this transaction T1 here came in at the node that it's connected to. And that node will be appointed as the coordinator for that transaction. Okay, And you can set up your system so there's exactly one node that's the coordinator for all transactions, or you can set up a system where any node can be the coordinator for a given transaction. The point is when the transaction comes in, it's assigned a single coordinator. So where is the lock table in a distributed database system? Well, in a typical design, the locks live on the same computer as the data that they represent. So the locks are partitioned with the data. This makes every node roughly independent. Each node manages its own lock table for its own data. This works well for objects that fit on a single computer, like a page or a tuple. Now, for things like tables, they may be spread across multiple computers. So for these coarser grained locks, we're just going to have to assign some home node for that. And that object uh, that's being locked exists across all the nodes, but one of the nodes is the home node that's responsible for that lock. And so in one scenario, these locks, like locks on table names, can be partitioned across the nodes. Maybe they're hash partitioned or round robin partitioned, so that different tables are the responsibility of different nodes for locking. Or if you like, you can have all of the global locks on a single machine, and that machine's responsible for all global locks. And really, this is a decision that doesn't matter a lot unless you have a great many of these locks uh, for global objects. Now, ignoring the global locks for a moment, um, every node is going to do its own locking for its local locks. When it locks a tuple, it's going to lock it locally. When it locks a page, it's going to lock it locally. This is simple. It's efficient. It actually just reuses the code we already had for single node databases in the straightforward way. There are, however, a couple of global issues that remain. The first is global detection of deadlock, and the second is commit and abort handling. We'll talk about each of those in turn.